Okay, we're back and we're looking at multi-loop resistor circuits. Uh, this this is very much related to what we do uh, with series and parallel sets of, of resistors and circuits with the primary goal of trying to figure out what to do uh, as far as currents. Okay, that's the, the main goal we're after is try to figure out the currents in every part of the circuit. And in series and parallel we can simply use our resistor rules. We can add resistors in series, we can do the reciprocal addition for parallel sets, um, find the total resistance, find the total currents, see how that current splits in parallel and so on. A multi-loop we're talking about something that looks really weird where you have um, multiple batteries in particular where those batteries are arranged in a way where we no longer have uh, nice neat um, sets of series and parallel resistors, especially parallel. So here's a case where there, there's three different batteries set up. Um, this 8 ohm resistor and this 4 ohm resistor, they're, they're not, we, we don't know for sure if those are in parallel with each other because these batteries mess up the voltages. Remember in parallel, if, if something really is in parallel, uh, those branches have to have the same voltage difference across them. We can't tell from this. We can't find the total resistance. So what do you do? Well, uh, the method that we use is based around Kirchhoff's voltage rule for series circuits. And we can basically say, okay, this left loop, for example, if that's all we had, if you ignore that 6-volt battery and 4-ohm resistor on the right-hand side and only looked at the left loop, we would expect there to be a current going around clockwise um, because of the orientation of, of those two batteries. And those two batteries are lined up together. They're acting as if they're a 12 volt battery in that loop. And it would produce some current that we don't know yet. Okay, So I'm, I'm going to guess that I1 is, is going around clockwise. Now we do the same thing on the right hand side, the right loop. Ignore the left loop, and if all you had was a 6 volt battery with a 4 ohm and 8 ohm resistor attached to it, we would expect that battery, again based on its orientation, to drive a current going this way. I'll call it I2, I don't know what it is again, but that, that's our guess. So our goal is to try to figure out what I1 and I2 are. Well, because we have two unknowns, we, we know we have to have two equations. And so we'll write down what we call loop equations. And that's using the Kirchhoff rule. Well, what's the Kirchhoff rule? This Kirchhoff, nah, Kirchhoff rule says <laughs> that the voltage of your battery, or batteries in some cases, um, in other words, your, your input voltage, has to be equal to the voltage of all of your components as you go around a loop. If, if those components are in series with each other. So basically by the time you get back to your battery, you're at zero volts. You've used up all of your voltage. Okay? So for the left loop, uh, we have the two batteries lined up with each other. So we add those together. We get 12 volts. And now we, we uh, on the right hand side, we have to find the voltage of the resistors. Okay? Well, voltage of resistors is found with Ohm's law, e equals IR. So we have a total of 12 ohms that have current 1 going through it. Now, the key is, this is where we have to be careful. This 8 ohm resistor is being shared, in reality, between these two loops. From the direction that we have these currents flowing, We've got I1 coming down through it, and we've got I2 going up through it in opposite directions. What that means is the total current going through that 8 ohm resistor would be equivalent to your 8 ohms times I1 minus I2 because they're in opposite directions. So we have to include that minus 8I2 in our loop equation. Okay. Let's do the same thing, a similar thing, um, on the right loop. They really have one battery, so that's going to be 6 volts. 
um, I2 is going through both the 4 ohm and the 8 ohm resistors. Okay, so again, we have 12 ohms times whatever I2 is. Okay, but now the shared one is the 8. Again, you have the currents in opposite directions, so from this perspective, uh, the total current is I2 minus I1, so we have to include minus 8 ohms times that I1 current. So these are our two loop equations. Um, we, we need to solve those, of course. So I suppose what we can do is um, we have to solve the system. Uh, let me just go ahead and change these ever so slightly. Uh, let's say we want to eliminate the I1 terms. I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. Okay, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3. Okay, if we add those two equations together, you have all these voltages that add up to 42. These I1 terms drop out, and we're left with negative 16 I2 plus 36 I2 is 20 I2, and we can find I2. Uh, 42 divided by 20 is, what, 21 tenths, or, or 2.1 amps. Okay, we can plug that back into one of the other two equations. Um, let me take that second equation. Uh, let's reduce it. Uh, there's a common factor of, of 2. Okay, we can plug in I2. Uh, 6 times 2.1. Would be 12.6, and now we can solve for I1. Um, we'll move the, the 4I1 over to the left hand side, we'll subtract 3 and bring it over, and we can solve for I1. Uh, let's see, 9.6 divided by 4 is 2.4 amps. So we've got the two currents. Okay, so back in our back on our picture, we've got um, 2.4 amps circulating clockwise, and in the right loop, we've got 2.1 amps circulating clockwise. So we've got the currents going through all the batteries and the, the both of those four ohm resistors. Now through the eight ohms. We've got 2.4 amps going down, we've got 2.1 going up. So that means coming down this shared branch is 0 0.3 amps going through the 8 ohm resistor. Okay, so we we now know what this currents or what the currents are and and all the different sections of that particular multi-loop circuit. So I hope this helps. Um, and it's just a nice little trick using Kirchhoff's voltage rule. You write down the two loop equations um, based on your guesses for the direction of the currents. And we, we solve the system, do some algebra, and we can figure out what those currents are. Okay, so I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.